what's what's going to happen is what's going to happen is today is is my fear, which is we're going to end up getting into a little technical discussion about every single point that we cover, and we're here for three hours. And basically, that's what I was saying earlier. If you really, if we really want to go into physical big time, if we really want to go into physical big time, we need two days, right? We need two days to do physical properly, right? And um, Mark Kovacs and I, you know Mark Kovacs? So yeah. in December we're going down into Florida to work on, to do the physical stuff for 10 and unders and create a, a qualification under the ITPA stuff. And um, we're, gonna, we're gonna film for four days, you know, and it's gonna take us two months to write the curriculum. It's, it's everything. Everything, as much as you have in technical, you have in physical. The key things you're always looking for is, you know, you start with the kids often looking this bit, right? Is this bit still? If this bit isn't still, give them something to look at. Normally that will correct most things. You have a whole load of other issues that go on. For example, if a kid ends up with their arms and legs, if they, if they, if they make their arms and legs too tight, they'll generally move like this. When they move like this, right, they'll move their body off balance all the time. Yeah? So if they're not keeping their arms loose and swinging, they won't be accelerating and therefore, you know, if someone does this, they're moving themselves off balance. So most of the things we're looking at here are all basic principles of human movement. Yeah? The, everything's designed to do a certain thing and it's designed to move in a certain way. Your knee is designed to lift like that, right? And lift like that. It isn't designed to do that very much, right? But you will have kids that run like that and you've got to work on, okay, well, if my legs are doing that, I'm off alignment, I lift the knees up like this, find that alignment, okay? If you've got, so the conversation we were having was, okay, we've got a kid who takes steps that are too big, he could be off balance. We could have a kid that takes steps that are too small, he might never get there. Everything's, unfortunately, coaching is working with a person in front of you, and he is different to her, is different to him, is different to, and you've just got to look at this and start understanding, right, Ultimately, I want to create Roadrunner here. Head still, arms and legs moving, and be able to stop on a dime. That's what I'm trying to work on. And everything I do, um, and again, it's, there's no magic wands in learning. If you really want to create a robust learning model where everything gets learned, what we mean by a robust learning model is this, right? What most people do is they approach learning from one side, right? They approach learning from one side, okay? And he gets real strong at that one thing. Yeah, we make him hit cross-court forehands forever from one place on the baseline, fed from the basket, all right? But actually, if you really want to create a good forehand, we need to send some in from here, some in from here, yeah, some in from here, some in from here, yeah, some in there. So basically, if we want to create something that's robust, that doesn't break down, we need ultimately to push it around and get to the point that, you see? Did you do something? Huh? Did you, did you do something? No. Oh, this one. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay. Do you get the idea? So we're always looking for, unfortunately, we're always, and the other thing is we're always looking for a progression. Step one, step two, step three, step four. That's not actually the way anybody learns. Well, they learn by progression, but the progression looks like this. It's like, do those five things. Okay, I've got the skill. Now I can move on to these five things. But it's not like step one, step two, step three, step four. That's not, that's, that, that thing always breaks down. Otherwise, if it was that easy, we'd learn everything in five minutes. Yeah? And this is also inferring how we learn through play, how we learn naturally, all those kind of things. Like I said, we, we don't have time to explore all this because it's about competencies today, but you get the idea. All right, so let's take um, a couple of those drills, right? And let's look at how we might do them as orange. Yeah? So let's just take real quick, let's say, okay, we have this balance position. Right, Issa, go over there. Right, so in orange, how do we have to move? We have to move forwards as well. So this time, we're gonna go like this. If I change and go like that, you gotta go that way, yeah? Ready? Go. All right, we could. Right, you ready? Yeah. So you stand there, I'm gonna put my hand out, I want you to come and touch it always by reaching over. You ready? Okay. Ready, go. Yep. 
Yeah, so we could explore areas like that as well. Okay, we could. Um, we could also. Yeah, work on going wider as well. So this time, could you just toss me a ball, coach? What we're going to do is we're going to sprint. We're going to stop. You put your hand on the ball and I'm going to push you off balance. Okay. Ready? Go. No, one leg. One leg, sorry. Gotcha. <laughs> right, you'll go. No, just catch it. So you're going to sprint. Right, you put it in your outside hand. You stop whenever you want to stop. Okay. I have to put my hand on the ball. You push me go. balance. Ready? Right, I win again. <laughs> All right. So it becomes more dynamic, faster. It's not like this. Sometimes it's, yeah. And sometimes we're going to go down here. Sometimes we're going to go up here. So just those two drills. We just take any two drills. We had this nice stop, rotate. Yeah, now we're going to push it forwards, backwards, uh, sideways, much wider, because those are the movements that we needed to create. Yeah? We might also have things like, uh, for example, you see where people teach split step. Yeah? You know dogs split step, don't you? Dogs do. Okay, watch this. Ready? Here, boy. Here, boy. Ready to go get it. Ready to get it. Ready to get it. Go! There you go, got one. Ready, <laughs> go. See, and that's enough of a split step. It's the point of reaction to start with. Cats don't, by the way. Okay, they just stick their claws in. So if you have a cat and you're really fed up with your partner at home and they're sat on the lap, right, and you wanna just go in the room and clap really loudly, the cat just goes like that. Right, you can get your own back real fast. But a dog is gonna kind of, it's just a point of reaction. So if you want him to split step, all we need to do, ready, Go. See it? We got a split step in there. Go. 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 See? We're getting them. Right? As opposed to what you know, you get these kids going split step and kid goes. Because he didn't need to. Yeah, you were just trying to teach it. Right? The same with crossover. You know, some people teach crossover like it's synchronized line dancing. You know, it's like. <laughs> you might as well put your thumbs down your trousers, right? Instead, what you want to do is, let's work, just clear a little space, all right? Okay, so ready? So, I want you to go out there, get the ball, get back as soon as you can, here we go. As soon as you can, quick, go. Okay. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's over there. Get back, get back, get back, get back. See, we got a crossover on the last one, yeah? If we, if we push him to the point where he needs to go fast enough, right, he has to get back, that's the reason. Now, you are gonna get a point of intervention with some kids. That means this. Sometimes you put someone in a situation, talented superstar, they do it, right? Other times you put them in a situation and you have to ask a question. How could you get back faster, <laughs> right? Other times you have the Homer Simpson kid. Right, no matter what you do, he's still standing there going, I don't know. Right, and then you tell him, do this. But that's always, should always be our kind of last resort, especially when we're doing footwork stuff. Otherwise, the footwork stuff becomes very, very weird. Right, they literally, it's like, yeah? And you have to understand, the, the, the application of the mission is what's key here. I'm trying to make them do something. Is that all right? How would we do this if we were doing green? Yeah, so, real simple. You're gonna let the ball bounce every time. You ready? Yep. Get the ball, throw it back to me, go. Okay, there's red. There's an orange one. Get it, come back to me. Okay, there you go, you backed up for green. All right, go. So now we've got every different place. We're gonna get someone else out in a minute. Every different place now. Okay, what we could also do, if we got a soccer ball, is we could work on two-handed throws as well, right? So he could just catch it, let it bounce, right? Throw it back, good. Let it bounce, throw it back. That would be a red throw. Go on the floor, pick it up and go, one go. That's it, so you've got to explode from the floor. 
Okay, go, go wide and get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, and throw as you go. Good. All right, and then catch it above your shoulder. Catch above your shoulder. Sorry, this time don't let it bounce. Okay, ready? Catch it above your shoulder and keep it up there. So what you want to do with the ball is you're going to get the kid to catch it up here, right, and then not allowed to drop the ball. So if you get the ball up here and you want to try and throw it, what must you use? Yeah, well done, coach. Top stuff. Right? You have to then be able to do this to do that. So we start working on that whole body coordination stuff we were talking about before. Because right? as soon as you've got a ball up here, the only way to do it is to go through there. So if you watch, catch it, keep it up. Now, now keep it up. You're not allowed to drop it down. Keep it above your shoulder. That's it. Come on, let's work those abs. Come on. He still can't do it. Use your legs. Use your legs. Come on. Use your legs. Oh. He's the Homer Simpson kid. <laughs> right? Get the idea? And don't forget, every time we show one of these drills, if we expect the kid to do it instantly, we're wasting our time. What we do is we do a drill and we expect the kid to maybe be able to do it in a few weeks' time. And, and we're going to keep practicing it. And that's really important that we don't just give them drills that they can do. The older they are, the longer that adversity should last. If you've got a green kid at 10 years old, give them difficult things that they can't do. And tell them we're going to practice this for six weeks. If you've got a red kid, they probably need to do it this lesson or the next lesson. It's one of the things about sort of the mental side of things. If you looked at this as a continuum and you said, this is success and this is challenge. Right, this is success, this is challenge. At red, you probably want it to look like that. Lots of success, a little bit of challenge, at a young age. By the time they get into orange, nine years old, right, level. There should be some challenges. By the time you get to green, you don't have to be successful every single time. Challenge is some, every single day at school, do you think they pass everything? Do you think they're successful the whole time? No, they've moved, moved up a group to be challenged more. So you want to try and increase the level of challenge. Right? That time frame thing can increase as well, so you can work on a skill for longer. So, he needs to work at this drill. He's not good enough. Okay? I'm not going to say that to him, I'm just going to say, oh wow, this is tough. Sometimes I even say, oh, this is impossible. No seven year old in the world could do this. And when you say that, you take away all element of failure. When I say to you, this is impossible, no one can do this, he goes, right, okay. Yeah, one little boy I had in the class, he, he was being really annoying and I said to him, you want to be the coach, don't you? And he said, yeah, 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 yeah. I said, when you can do this, whoops, I can't do anymore. When you do this, you can take the lesson. And every week for six weeks, I came to the club and he's there in the corner going. <laughs> and after six weeks, he came in and he went, my lesson. <laughs> All right, so basically, you've got to set these challenges. That's part of being a competitor. That's part of setting the environment for being a performance player. If you don't fail, how are you going to rise to the occasion when you've got a tough match? Yeah, competition after all. Competition after all. Come, after all. come here. Where are you from? Wales, actually. Wales, right. So we have a British Isles competition going on now. Ready? Go. Right. So competition is enjoying being here. Right? When it starts to shake. That's what you want the kid to be. Now, if you don't set them a little bit of adversity and a little bit of challenge as you move through these tasks, they're just going to want to win. If they want to win easy, you've destroyed your tennis player. You haven't got a tennis player anymore. Because at some point, they're not going to win. And when they get to that point, they start giving up. Mm. All right? You've got to get... He's not even trying hard, really. <laughs> right? You've got to get somebody who actually really wants to be here. That's what we're trying to create. Right? That's the American way, people. <laughs> All right? Well, it is. Right? Well, it used to be anyway. Okay. All right. So we've now got some concepts of red and concepts of orange and concepts of green. That's all we can do on physical. But you can see how every drill, if you just applied a must move, a must get balance, there's a whole lot of coordination stuff we could do with left, rights, and stuff like that, and crossovers. Like um, every time you set up a drill, you basically have an option to. Um, let me show you real quick. If I have, if I have one, two, three, four, like this, yeah? 
So just the most simple drill in the world, four cones. One, two, three, four. Yeah? You have different hands and feet for everything that you can do. Right? So for example, if you said to me, outside hand, and you said one, I have to touch that one. Four, I have to touch that one. Three, I have to go to that one. Okay? But you could say, crossover hand. Yeah? Now I have to do that one. I have to do that one. Yeah? You could say everything right hand, everything left hand. You could say everything uh, crossover hand and same side foot. Right, so now I've got to do that one. Yeah, and I've got to do that one. But I could do crossover hand and crossover foot. Now I've got to do that one. Yeah, and I've got to do that one. Four cones. But you've got one, two, three, four. Yeah, and you've got same side, same hand, and crossover. And you can get a whole load of coordination stuff like that. Remember, coordination is just combining movements. Anytime you combine anything, you're working on an element of coordination. So you've got loads and loads of things you could be doing within that. The best programs and uh, things in the world don't have 100 drills. They have 10 really good core drills that they use 10 different ways and they use them to build a skill. Like 10 warm-ups. Right. 10 minutes, unless. If the kid comes once a week, 10 minutes. If the kid comes twice a week, 15 minutes in every lesson. So if I've got a group of, you know that you've got those kids who come once a week, they want to play tennis. Right, now this is all technical, remember, so it is all building for their tennis, getting them in the right place. But you've got to teach them to serve and rally and score quickly. If I've got a kid who comes three times a week, he is not saying, I want to play tennis. He's saying, I might want to be a tennis player. Understand the difference? At which point, the amount of physical I have to do increases hugely. Because how many kids have you had who you thought were really good, but somehow when they got to 14, 15, 16, they didn't have the athletic skills and that's when it starts to show up, right? And you know what? It's too late then. It's too late. They're already midway through or they're coming out the other side of puberty. So it's too late. So you have to sort of differentiate a little bit. The once a week is it's 10 minutes. Two drills for four weeks. They'll get better at it. Kids don't have to do completely different things every time. They just don't want to do things for too long. Right? If you've, ever, if you've got kids and you've seen them watch TV, you know that. They'll watch a program over and over and over again. They won't always watch the whole program though. Yeah? Like when my daughter was little, she watched Lazy Town in the morning and the same episode after school. Right? It's things like that. For us, it's always different things. For them, it's just not for too long. So you can repeat drills, just don't do them for too long. All right? So 10 minutes, if he comes twice a week or three times a week, he might want to be a tennis player. The physical becomes more important. If you don't make him an athlete, he has no chance. Okay, I, t I convince the parents, I bring them down here. Uh, the, the only two times I've worked here, I've been up there, telling the parents what's going on. In a two hour session at Randall's at sport time, I go onto the balcony twice within that two hours, tell the parents what's going on. They are the customer. You have two customers when you're teaching kids, the, ki the parent and the kid, right? And you've got your choice. Either you let them turn into raving critics or you get them to turn into raving fans. Your choice. Right? And sometimes you might have to fire one. Fire the hell out of them, get rid of them, get them out of the sight. Especially if they're a peacock. You know a peacock parent? Okay, peacock parents like this, right? You know a peacock? Uh, 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 right? It's a big, big chicken with fancy feathers that thinks it's better than all the other chickens. If you pluck it and stuff it and stick it in the oven, it comes out like all the other chickens. Right? <laughs> but it thinks it's better, so it'll go strutting around going, uh, 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 uh. If you get a peacock, Pluck him, stuff him, get him in the oven, get him out of your club as fast as you can, right? It's not always possible, right? How are you just literally defining athletics? How am I literally just... Defining <laughs> athletics. We know we use the word... Okay. Ambiguously. Well... At this age, we, you and I kind of need to be on the same page. We're defining agility, balance, and coordination, right? So let me just define... Has everyone heard those things before? Agility, balance, coordination, yeah? A, B, Cs, right? Gets used all the time. What do all those things mean? Huh? 
But what does any one of those words mean? I've told you one of them. Okay. So which order do they work? Do they generally develop in? Nope. See, you forgot to ask the important thing. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> All right. You just let them. Someone came from with a bad, the right badge on, and they went agility, balance, coordination. You went okay. Right. Balance is the ability to control your body's position and posture. It's Roadrunner. Me, me. Right. Can you control this? Imagine it like this. I have a bucket of water here. Right. Can I move in every different direction without spilling the bucket of water? It's as simple as that. Right. Can I stop? Yeah, can I move without spilling it? I should look like I'm on rails eventually. That's what I'm looking for, right? Um, I, the ways to challenge balance, narrow my base, yeah? Take my, ba my bucket to the side of my base, yeah? Take my base higher, yeah? Take away one of my senses. Those four ways could all challenge balance, right? Coordin uh, the next one is coordination. Coordination is anything you combine. There are 12 principles of coordination. We can't go through them all, right? It, it's everything from combining where you are on the court to this hand and that hand. So control it, combine it, and agility is the ability to move at speed and change direction in a coordinated way whilst on balance. So it's control it, combine it, do it different directions and at speed. That's the foundations of what we need in tennis. Right? If, you, if you just do that, every activity, can I control it? Yes. Okay. Can I combine it with something? Yes. Can I do it in different directions and quickly? Yes. Right? If I can't, go back to the one before. Can't hold this position. Let's work on that for a bit. All right? Nine what? Oh, let's not go there today. We've only got three hours. God. Who let Dr. Zeus in? Right? I, no, I, but I tell you one thing, right? I tell you one thing I absolutely agree with is that everything we're learning is a feeling. Everything we're learning is a feeling and don't forget that. Because the fact that I did it on a smaller court could still mean I'm learning a certain feeling, a certain shape, and then I can repeat, I can trans take that feeling, transfer it to the next court. Right? And if I haven't learned that feeling on the smaller court and it's too far from me, right? Off, so people think about challenge being maximum. It's not maximum, it's optimum. I'll get a point where if I get too challenged, I don't get adaptation when I learn a skill. I'll get mutation where the skill breaks down or becomes inaccurate or you know, freaks out a bit. All right, okay, need to move on. Right, so let's look at the, so we've done a bit of physical. It's giving you a bit of a taster. We can come back and do another day on physical if you think it's a, a big thing, or you just go online and do it with the course we're writing. Right? Okay, so.